Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming for another episode of Adventures in Commercialization. Um, we're here to talk about how to raise money, how to be a successful business. A lot of people had some extra time during COVID, and we want to make sure that they turn their passions into careers. This week, we have a very special guest. We have a Barrett agent, and we have been coworkers and friends. And he has a really great model for a company. So we're going to find out what he's got going on. Hi, Barrett. Hello, Zoe. Glad, glad to be here today. <laughs> awesome. So tell us a little bit about you have an online business that has been one of a kind um, that you created. It goes back to actually 2016. And I was in Thailand at the time running uh, my longtime corporate uh, team building consultancy, which over the years had had a uh, you know, quite a few ups and downs being dependent on the corporate or sorry, on the tourism market, everything from tsunamis to financial fallouts to at the time, um, pretty serious political problems in the country, which was affecting our corporate market. And I was, you know, that was really hitting my uh, um, pocketbook, shall we say. And I started thinking, boy, you really need to uh, think of some other backup idea, Barrett, when you know, tourism, something that's not so tourism dependent. And it was uh, just racking my mind for quite a while until one time, uh, because I was also doing uh, real life, of course, ceremonies, wedding ceremonies on the island of Phuket, which is um, um, a premier wedding destination in Southeast Asia there. So many couples go there from all over the world to have their weddings at beautiful four and five star beach resorts and villas. Um, but I was having a Skype uh, call with one of the, those couples before they were coming to the island. And when I was walking them through the ceremony and we got to the, like the I do part and I was saying some of the words, the lady actually started crying a bit. And the, a little light bulb went on in my head and I said, well, gee, if I could make her cry during this casual little Skype call we're having here, I wonder what, if I could do that same, have that same dynamic during a real full on ceremony online. So I started playing around with that idea. And I like with a lot of ideas, I started convincing myself more and more it was workable and possible. And then I just took it from there. So we're looking at online wedding ceremonies, online vow ceremonies, um, reunion ceremonies. Um, so so what? how did you know that this was a good idea? Were there other companies doing this out there in the world? No, actually, I did quite a bit of research at the time because I suspected what I was doing particularly was maybe the first anyone had done like that. So I researched quite a bit about the history of online weddings, and I found interestingly first that they had actually started back in the late 1990s and were mostly from immigrant couples who were here in the U.S., but their bride maybe was back home in Romania. And they had an on-site minister with her there, and the groom would be here in the U.S. And that was basically all that had done anyone had been doing until uh, actually IKEA, or, uh, sorry, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, the home decor place, came along and did a one-off beautiful home setting that they used for a virtual online wedding. Different from mine, but it was still probably the world's, you know, maybe the first online ceremony formalized. But it was a one-off advertising thing for them, not the, a commercialized service like I was going to be offering. And again, my format was different where I actually brought the couples in next to me side by side to create the most realistic kind of setting that I could. Um, and uh, I wanted to make sure that my claim on my website, this is the world's first commercial-based marital service, was correct. And from all the research, it, it appears to be so. And what also inspired it at the time was my nephew was in the military. He was stationed in North Korea. And he was mentioning to me what an extraordinarily high divorce rate they had with soldiers who were living over there and their wives back home just because of the distance involved and the stress on the relationship. And I thought, gee, if I could help connect those couples in a way, and then I started thinking about other couples who are separated by distance or maybe offshore workers. If I could help those couples connect even from across the world, well, that would be a valuable and useful 
thing for both them and myself because I really do love doing the ceremonies. That's amazing. Um, sounds like you have a world traveling family. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about your business model. So we are a virtual business only. Yes, uh, that is correct. Uh, while I will still do still do some real life ceremonies when I go back to uh, Thailand in the uh, near future, um, I will keep doing virtual online weddings for many years. In fact, it's a little bit of kind of my semi retirement plan. Because while it has been semi-popular up to this point, I am also expecting it to get more and more popular over the years, is if you think about it, because A, we have these uh, younger generations who are born in a digital world and they're growing up in this, so it's less of a foreign concept to them than compared to maybe current generations. Further, um, there's so many couples I'm running into now who met online, actually, maybe 10, 5, 10, 15. I had one couple who met when online dating was just coming out like 20 years ago. And they met in a simple forum, a chat forum. And they, you know, were courting each other for several years and they got married um, again, 20 or 18 years ago or so. And they came to me and said, hey, we, we met online and we want to get married online. And it was just a fantastic event as well. So I expect expect with the increasing number of couples nowadays and I'm running into that are meeting online as opposed to traditional methods that the business model will be more successful over time. So we do people from all over the world for this type of business. Um, did COVID like be, people being from home and staying at home, did that boom your business? Did that affect you at all? Sure. I will be quite honest in saying that before COVID, I only had a few couples, which was partly due to the fact that I had kind of put in vows off to the side because I was my corporate business had come back and I was so busy with that. And I wasn't doing any marketing with it. But then along comes the pandemic, my corporate market disappeared. And then fortunately, and I say this uh, truly because it put food on the table at the time when I had no other income, Thankfully, I started getting lots of inquiries for couples about online ceremonies. And I soon realized that it's not that there's anything wrong with my concept or whatever, but it's just that couples didn't know about it and they didn't think about it until circumstances required them to be creative and come up with a solution to a problem, which was COVID, and they couldn't go out and do these things in real life. And vows fit in perfectly there and it met their need and they really appreciated it. We had the same emotions as you would in a real life ceremony. And again, I've had real life ceremonies nearly about 2000, I stopped counting, but uh, I get as many tears in my online ceremonies as real life ones, hands down. That's so fantastic. It's funny because my parents, uh, my mother and her, uh, her new husband, they actually got married during COVID. Um, they got married 10, 10, 2020. And I think that they, at that time during COVID, they just had to go down. They didn't even have to go to the courthouse because we were, you know, social distancing and everything. So they actually had to go and just get a notary to sign it. If, I think if they would have known about this, this would have been a little bit uh, more extravagant of an event and maybe a little bit more emotions involved. I asked if they had a picture with the FedEx guy. <laughs> Oh, no. for sure. I would have loved to have helped them out. Um, oh. unfortunately, unfortunately, though, during yeah. the pandemic, states did get more lenient and accepting of virtual online weddings as a legal ceremony. However, since the pandemic, most all of them have pretty much rescinded that uh, unless you meet very certain uh, requirements like you're a military person overseas or um, other, there are ways to do it, but it's quite complicated, which is the main reason why also why I have focused on symbolic ceremonies with vows. And also, I will say this, um, weddings are not my main market or my main business. By far, the um, majority of couples coming to vows are doing it uh, as renewal of vows, which I love. It's I love that idea as well. 
I've, I've been to a couple of uh, renewal of vow ceremonies recently, and I just think it's fantastic. I think there's a lot of meaning towards it. And I think that if you can help, you know, help the couples do that, that's, that's fantastic. So let's take a idea of like, how does, how does your marketing look? How, how does these types of ceremonies uh, look? Uh, primarily, I um, receive uh, inquiries from couples directly through the website. I'll be the first to admit that there's a lot more I could be doing marketing wise, but at this stage, I've pretty much, much exercised all of your basic lower cost kind of advertising models and using first and foremost, Google itself and uh, ensuring I have a high Google uh, SEO ranking, especially for the renewal of vows. And I believe I do have a, a very one based also on the longevity. I was, again, doing that since 2016, long before the pandemic. And also on my website, I have, uh, or sorry, on Google reviews, 100% five-star rating and some, not just five-star ratings, like some awesome reviews from the couples and Google loves that. Okay. So they really help, they do help me uh, with that. And I hope my couples will continue to give those great reviews. But uh, I, if I want to take it to the next level, basically, I will have to move to a more extensive paid marketing campaign level. Yeah, well, that's just, you know, the next step in your marketing scheme. Um, as a startup and as a self-owned business, I think that this is fantastic. The look and feel is already looking great. Uh, I've reviewed your website several times, so virtualweddings.com, if anybody is thinking about renewing some vows or having a very special moment. Um, Fairy Agent is here for you. Uh, you can do themes. We have different themes. What, what are some of the themes that you've had on your show? Uh, those were actually complicated and involved as they were, were just awesome experiences as well, because it was like a interactive uh, cooperation between myself and the couples. And they brought a lot of the original ideas themselves. For example, we did the first world's first uh, online matrix renewal of vows, uh, a <laughs> lovely couple uh, out of uh, New York. And this was during the height of the pandemic. And we got really creative about it. And, you know, using video editors, I can bring in special effects, have a nice matrix background with the numbers running. Um, and uh, we just had fun with it. Uh, if you ch uh, checked out the YouTube channel there, I believe there's a, a clip of that. And also a, a Star Wars loving couple who goes to these conventions and has costumes, they wanted a Star Wars themed one, which we also had a, a, a gr great fun with. And I brought in Darth Vader as a little cameo and good fun. So it's, uh, just bring me, I, I tell couples, bring me your ideas. We'll play with it and run with it there uh, best as we can. Though I do have trouble with um, Elvis impersonations. I just don't have the look. That's awesome. It brings a little bit of personability to every ceremony that you're having. Um, you mentioned YouTube. So we have our website, we have your YouTube channel. A lot of the couples allow you to record them and post them on YouTube. Is that for them or is this for your marketing or how does that work? That's actually a tricky question, Zoe. I have some, use some clips on there, but generally for privacy reasons, I don't use a lot of them. Um, we have a lot of uh, intimate uh, moments in our ceremonies, and there is one clip on there, and I even had to cut it out, but they were just bawling their eyes out, and so was I, and it made me a, a experienced celebrant uh, crying as well, and I just, and I, I did get their special permission to put that on there, but uh, generally, I don't want couples to think uh, or worry about, oh, is my, uh, my, uh, special moment going to be broadcast out there for the world. So I do limit the amount of video advertising I actually do. And if more likely, uh, and rely on static shots that uh, post to like Google my business or my profile, Google my profile. That's uh, wonderful. So what are some of the biggest hurdles that you have faced as an entrepreneur trying to have a business, an online business? Um, well, besides the usual challenges first of coming up with the name and a, a logo, which I think is mind boggling for a lot of um, entrepreneurs or SME 
owners uh, that might be doing this themselves, a lot of these things themselves. Um, though I did also, I'll tell you a hint maybe to other people that really did help me out was using online services that provide like Fiverr and Upwork along those lines where you can find specialists to help you with whether it's your logo or your web design. And uh, a lot of them are quite affordable. So it, it that was a big help to me getting started. But insofar as challenges, I guess the main one for me is that a lot of couples naturally don't think about online ceremonies. It is natural. I understand that for weddings, this is the most special day in their life. Most brides are thinking about these grand ceremonies with all their family and friends. Completely understandable. It's not their first inclination to think online. And even for, same goes for renewal of vows. Um, but I think if the concept was more out there in front of couples, that they would say, hey, that's that's actually a great idea. And maybe we're going to run off to Martha's, Martha's Vineyard uh, for our renewal of vows, just like I had a couple of, uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, we don't need all of our other friends and family, just us there in our beautiful setting. And let's have a good time, person, very personal setting. And for the online ceremonies, they don't have to worry about anything else. It's just them and me. So they get really um, connected. Yes, I I do know a lot of ceremonies over COVID that had a live broadcast. A lot of people couldn't travel as far. I mean, flight tickets are getting more expensive. So I think that this is a great resource for them to be able to have a special day and have everybody included um, worldwide, nationwide, statewide. I think that this is really fantastic. Um, tell us. What are, what are some of your favorite stories of, of having some of your couples here? I know that you, you were telling me a couple previously, but I'd love to share with some of our audience. Yeah, I have to be careful here not to go on too long. But first, <laughs> my first one was, was an awesome one. It was a, a lady in the U.S., a Christian lady who had approached me. And she had a fiancé who was in Saudi Arabia. And he was Muslim. And they had never met in real life, but had had a quite, you know, ongoing online relationship for over a couple, for more than two years. And they really loved each other, but it was very difficult for them to get together at that time. And in fact, for him, it would be illegal. He could go to jail for marrying a non-Muslim in Saudi Arabia. So it was actually kind of dangerous what he was doing. Uh, and so they were truly on opposite sides of the world, but we got together for this. And I was still, you know, experimenting a bit with my formatting and stuff like that. But it just went off so smoothly. The both of them were crying. And at the end, I said, Barrett, <laughs> you got something good here. <laughs> and because uh, it got this wrong, the exact response I wanted to get. So that was a great one. Um, another one was uh, recently I had an American guy who was in Turkey. His Iranian fiance was is in Iran, but her father wouldn't let her leave the country. He has her passport. That's how it is there. And wouldn't let her leave the country to officially marry him, even though they had a license, until they had some kind of ceremony. Well, catch 22. They couldn't get together. They couldn't have a ceremony. So they got creative. They found vows. And we got ready to do the ceremony. And at the last minute, the dad pulled the plug on it. Said no, this is I, I'm not going to give my blessing to this. And I was waiting on hold there for 30 minutes while they talked to Dad, and then finally he came back around, and we did it with a groom sitting in his car at the airport, and the bride in her wedding dress in her place, and the, again the tears were just flowing, magic. Okay, one more real quick. Yeah, I had a couple just last week who they met 30 years ago during high school. They were the first. First for everything for each other. First boyfriend, girlfriend, first date, first kiss, first everything. But somehow over the years, they got separated and went apart. 30 years later, they come back and find each other in real life. And they're at a stage where they don't need no fancy real life wedding. They came to me and we had a, just the most wonderful, tearful ceremony you could imagine. It was, again, magical. 
You're creating some incredibly special moments for people. I think that this is fantastic. So as your business model, um, are, are you the only person in your company? You're, you're, you run, you manage, you host all by yourself? Yes, at this stage, uh, if it ever, you know, grew to bigger proportions, I would definitely need a um, Zoom engineer to help me with the technical side, because it is quite a bit for me to be managing the technical side, especially when we get to those movie themed ceremonies and stay in ceremony mode. Because here's another thing is my whole ceremony is in my head. I've been doing it for 20 years and I don't need to be looking at stuff like most ceremony masters or wedding celebrants or ministers would. That helps me out a lot, but it still requires a, an intense amount of focus to be doing both of those at the same time. And I can do it on the level I'm doing now, but if it ever got super big, I would uh, expand that. Uh, what other milestones do you have coming up here that you'd like to, to achieve for your business? Gee, I haven't really thought about that so much, but I guess um, recently I have been getting more and more couples. So it is inspiring me. Uh, I mean, I lost confidence for a while that I thought, oh, maybe this is only because of the pandemic and that couples were only coming to me then. But since, you know, recently I have, uh, it, go, it does go up and down a bit, but I am still having couples coming to me. So that's giving me inspiration to think, what is the next level that I want to take this to? And should I, while juggling it with my other career obligations, which still do include the corporate team building side of things, which I would like to do for at least another year or two before I would then turn more fully to vows and you know, expanding upon the possibilities there. And so as a entrepreneur and with a great business model thus far, creating magical moments for people, what uh, other advice would you have for give to other entrepreneurs out there today? Well, I suppose it might be a bit of a cliche that they'll hear from lots of uh, entrepreneurs or people in business. And that is that it really does help, of course, to come up with something that you can truly be passionate about. <laughs> and when I first started this, thought of this idea of concept, and I put it by all my friends and family, almost every single one of them thought, Barrett, that's really not a great idea. Nobody's going to want to do that. Okay. But I did have, you know, maybe one or two people who were helpful there and, and giving me confidence. And, and in my own heart, I believed it could be. So I persisted with it and it paid off. So, you know, don't let others dissuade you if they might not think your idea is great. I think we have heard that before on the show. So that's really insightful. I think, you know, never giving up. If you feel your idea, if you have that little voice in your head that's telling you to just do it, go ahead and try it. You know, the worst they can say is no, right? And, but they could say yes. And they could be saying yes to a dress. They could be saying yes to their virtual wedding. They could be saying yes to uh, their future husband. And they're saying yes to trying out this new virtual online business, which I just think is fantastic. I think that this model is really great. You're creating great moments for people. And it's it's a whole new model. It's a whole new thing. I mean, you're, you're the first one that I know who's doing it. Um, if you look up virtual weddings um, online, so we have that you can just look up. Here's the yep virtual online weddings.com. Then Actually, if you, sorry, if you do, Google that, you'll just as much likely come up with real wedding services who are giving you virtual coordination online, but are far different actually from what I'm doing. So um, I'm not sure how it, it, in general it comes up there, but especially if you Google uh, renewal of vows or something along those lines, you're, you're bound to run into me. Uh, well, we have Barrett Agent. You can look him up. Uh, it, it does come up pretty quickly on Google. There are, you know, ads and things like that now that are probably boost up right in front of you, but you are there. Once you look it up, uh, his renewal of vows are there. 
there's examples, there's, I think, Star Wars and the Matrix and a lot of different models where you can look at and pick a theme. If you're looking for something really unique and special to do with your partner for your next renewal of vows, I think that this is a great model and everybody should try it out. Thank you so much, Barrett, for coming on here. You have created something that is unique and very special. And I think that more people should take advantage of it. We're going into this digital age. People from all over the world can benefit from this. So I'm really excited to show them. Um, I think that you have come up with a model that's here to make money, uh, not only for yourself, but also just as a great online platform to as a business. Um, and also to create just incredibly special moments. So it's it, it's all in one here. And it's something that he's passionate about. I think that that's really important. We always want to give back more into the world than we're taking out of it. And we want to make sure that everybody's having as special of a day as we feel that we are having. So it's really awesome to see what you're doing as this business model that we can tell you're very passionate about and that's creating amazing times for everybody. So thanks so much for creating this platform. Um, we'll broadcast it to the world and see um, how it goes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure, and thanks for having me, Zoe. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.